Welcome back to Project Ainscough. This is the Tamiya MAN TGX and in this instalment we're going to fit all of those transmission parts into the transmission case. Stay tuned. Right, now we start. Um, there are three main sections. There's the selector shaft and then there is shaft A and shaft B. Um, I'm going to separate all these parts into the relevant shafts and I'm going to cover each one individually. We have the bushings over here which I am going to replace with um, bearings, um, roller bearings. I always do this with my builds. You don't have to but if you're running them for a long period and it's, it's better to do that. I'm only going to replace two of the bigger ones because the other two don't rotate on uh, shaft A. They just slide back as, backwards and forwards. So they're going to stay as bushings. And I'll show you that later. So I'm going to split all these up into the relevant parts. And I'm going to get really close up so you can see what I'm doing. I'm going to change the camera angle. So we're going to start off um, quite easy on the shift rod, which is quite straightforward. And as you can see, this one is opposite to that. And uh, the center line, it's squiggly, but that is the center line. So basically we're just going to get these two small E-clips and we're going to put them on either side of that centre part. And this does take um, quite a bit of patience. And you, you do have a couple of these um, spare in your kit. So you know, it doesn't matter if, if one goes flying across the room. I found an easy way of uh, putting these on. So there is that. Now you'll notice on this end that the slot is right at the very edge. Whereas on this side, it is not. And this side is the front of the gearbox. And um, all I'm going to do is just slide that MD11 on there, followed by the MD16 spring. There is a washer. That you can never pick up because they are rather fat and fiddly. Um, people say, "Oh, lick your finger and just pick it up like that." I just grip the bottom edge of that of the players. It's like. Uh, like that and that goes in there like that <clears throat> so we can hold it from that end slide on MD11 and then J1 another MD11 MD16 spring, the MA11 washer, and then pick up your last E clip, pull the washer down slightly. Pull 
lost a little bit of grip there. And on it goes. So that is what your shift rod should look like. And now it is all uh, done and dusted, we can get some lubrication and I just lubricate the springs, pull that back, get some in there, push that back, get some in there, push that back, and get some in there. So that is all but uh, ready to go. Slide some in there, some in there. Because all that's doing is is just moving like that. So we'll leave that at that and we'll move on to shaft A. Gear shaft A. This is going to be the front again. So look at the um, shift rod. We'll see that there's the wider splines here and then the two slightly narrower splines just towards the left of the shaft. And this part does not need any lubrication because the whole thing spins, rotates. So as you can see, that this spline here carries this gear and two clips. This spline here carries the wider 13 tooth and 36 tooth. And the left hand side does the 27 tooth with MD7 brass. And they just have a um, E clip each side. So it's quite straightforward. This part has no left or right. This is just straight on. Um, so let me, to make things easier for yourself, you could just put that is rather tight. There we go. Slide that on. Make sure it goes over the splines and then stand that up. Put on the E clip. Come on. And then that is that. We can then put on the E clip just here. And then we can get this E clip on to the inside edge of that spline while we have the pliers in hand and then this part the brass has a slight collar on it up there and that fits inside the hex of uh, the 27 tooth gear so that just sits flush uh, just there and then that goes on like so and then that brass piece is just sticking out of the top there and we put in a final e-clip or the final one for this gear <laughs> Come on, 
that's uh, that's been nice. Let's play games. I keep my fingers quite close to this because if the clip comes off, then it's likely to stay. somewhere quite close to my fingers so that is that on there and then the other one um, again this has a recess on there and that fits inside the 36 tooth one so it just nearly sits flush with the outer edge and then that one fits inwards like so. And this is the last E clip on shift rod A. Great stuff. So nothing actually spins on there. So just to have a quick uh, close up look at that. First gear, the middle gear, and the, the other one, that's it. And that is shaft A. And now we move on to gear shaft B. This one has a lot more parts involved and you can see just here that we have the uh, the bronze bushings or whatever they're made of um, so what i'm going to do now is these need to be glued in they don't have bearings because this part only slides back and forth so they don't need the um the bearings and it does say in the instruction manual do not use bearings so I'm going to glue these uh, parts in using just a, a, a small amount of uh, glue just brush that on press that in there and then press that in there and they will stay put in there I'm going to put that just there so it's uh, the, the big lugs are facing towards the right and with the 44 tooth 37 tooth and the 30 tooth um, I'm going to put the roller bearings in but I will be just using some uh, shellac uh, rather than rather than glue And that that should just be enough, uh, just enough to um, hold them. Whilst uh, look at it all, it's all moving because it's all off balance now. So again, a little bit of uh, shellac in there. And that doesn't uh, seize the bearings up. And then in there. Shellac is used in some engine builds that um, they don't have a gasket, but it, it just fills that slight imperfection in any of the machine surfaces. So it creates an oil tight seal. Right, that's all the bearings in and uh, what we need to do now is um, just get the um, two clips um, either side of um, J7 and I suggest putting it in this middle one uh, first because all will become clear in a second
because J7 need a bit of lubrication on there J7 the forks point towards the left and then we can get the e-clip behind there a lot easier than we can between the lord the, the longer uh, prongs on the shift fork i don't know what they call people call them dogs shift dogs so that's that like so and then these slots just here they fit over these forks this side is smooth so that needs to go on this way so we'll just apply a little bit of um lubrication in there I will be adding more when we get that close and then that fits in just there and then we can add an e-clip to hold that gear on And then we add this MD6 note on the end just there we have a collar the other side is smooth the smooth edge fits down on there that is splined we don't need um, lubrication there that is held in place by another e-clip and then we get J6 which has a hex and on the other side it has the three uh, prongs there's nothing for that to fit in here so that basically fits on to there but we will get um, some lubrication on that and then that just sits on there and that can slide back and forth and then of course the the gear follows that this is the 30 tooth you can see that that's got the three slots here and this side um, it's just not not infilled so those three larger slots fit over there no need to add um, lubrication there because it's got a bearing but um, if you wanted to it doesn't do any harm whatsoever and then the last um, e-clip on this side try not to drop them I've just put my fingers there again just in case it uh, decides to escape and it doesn't and then if that uh, slides there that can slide there so that's constantly engaged with that one so now on this side we're working from this way so the first thing we put on is the washer then we get the second um, MD8, I think it's MD8, MD6, okay, um, that again has um, a collar at the top and then smooth on the bottom, the bottom part goes up against that washer 
that is splined it doesn't need any kind of lubrication we do lubricate the top of this because we have J8 which is this profile as you can see it's got prongs on one side and grooves on the other the grooves go towards this part here so it looks like so and then we get um, the next gear which is the 44 tooth and it doesn't have grooves on this side it just has grooves on this side which need to go towards this so we can just do that if you wanted if you're using bushings don't forget to put a little bit of lubrication on there and then just run that up um, uh, and then we have this um, what's that J6 I don't know well, I can't remember no that's uh, off the um, J5 it's J5 and then the last e-clip that's trying to uh, escape great fun these uh, gearboxes constantly have to um, glance over at the manual so that's that that's uh, that and then that go over there go in there and that's uh, that's basically that so let's have a quick look we have sir clip gear sir clip they have the 1150s inside there we have the um hex with the sliding selector dog another gear we have that little washer just in there another selector dog and then this one it does fit, feel like it's free rolling but yeah and that's uh, basically gear shaft b let's stick all that together and uh, put it in the transmission right this is the front part of the um the transmission casing motor mounts here and shift rod goes in there so all i'm going to do is put in um the the four rods i'm going to use uh, thread lock um on these i'm just going to put it inside there so uh, i know which way is which not too much only needs a little bit there we go and then I'm just going to just spin those in there not that one then keep forgetting don't put that one in we don't put the third one in just yet the top one They do grip onto the, the casing, so you can actually tighten them up without gripping hold of uh, these with pliers. This fits on there like that. These small nuts in there. 
let's just get a little bit of uh, thread lock just inside that hole because the bolt that I'm about to push through will take the, uh, the thread lock in. And that fits in there so that's the front part of the gearbox we're not well not quite actually as we have the shift rod guide um, that are common on the uh, excuse me European trucks and that fits in uh, there like so and another Can't put that one on yet. And that's ready to uh, rock and roll on there. Just have a quick glance over at that. Because on this, that's that way. On this side, obviously, it's that way. So they push through from the inside. Um, what I will do is just get some uh, shellac because we're going to be putting in some bearings in that. And that is that, and that is that. Now we bring in the gear shafts that we've done. Gear shaft A, gear shaft B, and the shift rod. And here we need to do these with a generous amount of um, lubrication. So the, the, the shift forks will be sitting in those. This is just super lube that uh, I'm using. I'm going to put a bit more on after it's um, assembled. So now we can line these um, shift forks into each of those grooves. Come on, there we go, a bit fiddly, but that's how it will look. And then these gears, this silver part on this sits on top of that 44. So basically it sits like that. And then we have to get that in here. Now if you're using um, the, the kit bushes make sure you, you lubricate those ends and then get the shift fork um, through that bottom one and then guide those 
two shafts into those bearings and there we go in fact we need to take that out again because I forgot to put that spring on do not forget to put that spring on because that's very important so through there top one in middle one in and that is like that and then we put on the spring on this end and then we can put that through there and don't forget to put lubrication on these ends if you're using the kit bushings then we can get this I'm going to put um, a little bit of uh, thread lock in the end of there I'm just take that off actually because I'm going to put some in each of those ends Just spin that top one in so then I can get this one screwdriver make sure it's not cross threaded to go now on the end of this um, shift rod just here we should have two remaining eclipse just keep everything um, from from going too far in on the travel just grab all of that Push that onto there, and the same on the other end. Now we can put. this on here I've got that the right way no I haven't that way
and that does push right up against that um, e-clip uh, we've got the little tiny Tamiya box spanner and I think that might fit on there yes it does so I'm just going to put a little bit of weight on that not too much because it'll snap and that fits on there so your gear shift servo does that now we need the motor and as many of you know I don't like that motor it's a very good um, Mabuchi 540 it's a 27 turn very 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 reliable but it draws a lot of current and it is far too fast for this truck so that's going to go in the box of spares and we're going to be fitting Carson Poison some people don't like them I do never had a problem with them they're an 80 turn and they're very very reliable indeed so um, let's fit this little cardboard gasket I know I know there's no pinion not yet anyway and a couple of uh, six mils and a washer because um, thread find the thread that's found the thread this one has a washer because this one's the adjustment uh, screw don't go too long with these screws because they are um, Um, short because they don't they don't want to go too far into the motor um, right now we come to the pinion gear stock pinion and a very short grub screw we need a small amount of thread lock on there because the last thing we want to do is for the pinion gear to come loose because it's an absolute pain in the behind so I'm just going to have a look down there just until it starts to come through because on the motor there is that flat spot and that grub screw fits over that flat spot now here's a tip let me just zoom in a little bit because we just need that grub screw that when it rotates it misses the edge of this gear and it still has full width on here so I'm just going to um, very gently just tighten that up a little bit not dug it up just yet because what I want to do is just slacken that back a little bit and then just turn that and that is 
Oops, you can't see. That is not fouling that gear. So I'll just bring that around to the top. And then I'm just going to give it a couple of um, a little bit of pressure on that. And that is that. Now, if we have this pinion too tightly on there, if it's if it's meshed too tightly, it's going to make a noise. If it's not meshed enough, it's going to make a noise. And at the same time, it will give a little bit of premature um, wear. So I'm going to zoom right in on this. I'm going to lock that exposure because what we need to do just raise that up i'm going to get a slip of paper and then just very lightly press down on the gear and whilst that is in there i'm going to tighten that and tighten that so when we take this um, paper out, we should be able to see a very, very small amount of play between those gears. It might be a little too much, but we need that small amount of play to, um, to ensure the correct meshing of the gear. So I just put a bit of uh, lubrication on the selector dogs and uh, the gears. I thought I'd press play and I hadn't. So I'm just going through the motions again. You can put as much as you like on because if there is any excess, it will get flung off to the um, gear casing right I'm not going to get a battery for this just to run it up I'm just going to get um, a bench power supply set at 7.2 volts because I have a bench power supply this is a constant mesh gearbox, so it might not fully, depending on whereabouts um, in the cycle it is, it, it, it might, like there, it, it's, it's a little bit stiff. It needs to be running when you change gear. That's what a constant mesh gearbox is all about. So let's uh, switch on the power. Second gear. Third gear. So if you've put your truck together and you're running it and it sounds like it's um, missing a beat, then you're probably between gears. I'll show you what that is. There, there's no drive to the output. You can see just down here. So it needs to be in gear, in second, or in third. There can't be any, any in between. Or you get that. So it needs to be in gear. So that's from first to third to second and you can see this gear when it's in this gear if I release it you can just see it slowly closing so I don't know if you can hear me but that sounded really good that sounded really quiet so any excess grease will be flung off 
onto the edges. So don't be scared, get some grease on there. Don't need any heavy duty uh, motor oils or anything like that. You just need just ceramic grease because it is just a model, a model truck gearbox. So the only thing for me to do now is to fit the drive shaft cup, which is over here. And there's a longer grubby grub screw, and there should be um there should be a space apart somewhere. So what I'm gonna do now is close all this up after I've put this on. So this goes in there like that on the edge get a little bit of uh, um, thread lock in uh, there my 1.5 millimeter thingy magic Gonna look down that hole, just back it off because it needs to fit over the um, flat spot of the um, output, so that can go on there. And again, what I'm going to do is just check down there that that is pointing towards that flat spot so what I do is I twist 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 in like that because if I back that off and pull it out you'll see that it leaves an indent which I like to see on there so basically yeah give that a good tighten up in there and that seems like we are uh, almost ready we are ready we are ready Get my hands, they're all sticky with lubrication. So I'm just gonna uh, wipe my sticky finger marks off. On this side we have um, hexagon profiles to receive um, a nut, five nuts, five bolts. So I'll just stick that one in there. I'm not sure if the manual says put thread lock on it, but I don't think I ever have. I'm not going to tighten up all of them up until I've got the last one in. I seem to have more. Um, bolts and I need, I need that's not the right one these are eight mil and that one was a six seems to have got another six millimeter uh, mixed in with that lot Oops, 
it's easier if you work on a mat because the nuts and the bolts and the screws don't bounce as uh, as easy as what they are doing here. Oh, I've got um, more of these. Not three too many. So I'll just give those a bit of a nip, not too much. And that, folks, is the um, the transmission, all done and dusted. Don't know what they are, don't know what they are for. I got them out for some other reason. But yeah, that is it. Now, that is the transmission. <laughs>